on yeah. uh, on this on the screen. So, you should so what is this know. about? Okay, <laughs> hey, so <laughs> we're we're, we're live we're live now. So <laughs> awesome. Okay, I was well, running this show. <laughs> Uh, we, we we have to deal with we have to deal with our producer there. Uh, so this is this panel today this morning is um, are you listening? Um, so the basic is uh, you publish your you publish your book. No, I can't even talk this morning. I'm sorry. Uh, you publish your book uh, and how do you get an audio book? This is we're going to talk about uh, various methods for audio book production and how a new author can get started. If I could actually talk this morning, I'm sorry. I, my stutter and lisp was coming up. Uh, anyway, I'm Jay Baraz. I'm your mom, mom moderating today, and uh, just start off. We're gonna go right, go around the table here, and uh, everybody introduce themselves. Start off with uh, JS Arkin right there. We'll go around the circle. Uh, yeah, I'm JS Arkin. I'm a blah. I speak for a living, and you can obviously tell that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're almost as bad as me. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's early. Forgive me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. It's 7 a.m. I'm uh, drinking my tea. Uh, I am a professional audiobook narrator. Uh, I do a lot of lit RPG, fantasy, sci-fi, uh, and I'm happy to be here with all you beautiful people. <laughs> narrator, so she's, she's happy. <laughs> uh, I'm Steve Campbell, and uh, I also am a narrator. Uh, my One of my Discordians called me, uh, gave me the tagline, professionally talks too much, and I loved it. I think he was trying to like <laughs> put a little jibe in there, and I'm like, no, that that works. I, I'm living for that one. Um, yeah, so I've been doing audiobooks for about six years now and uh, loving every minute of it. So, yeah. Awesome. Steph? Uh, I'm Stephanie Namit Parker. I um, have been doing audiobooks. It'll be four years next Tuesday when my first book came out. Um, I do sci-fi sci-fi lit rpg a fantasy i do a little, i think i do a little bit of everything but i feel like my heart really kind of lives in the lit rpg area fantasy sci-fi realm um so i'm trying to do more of that these days um yeah i've got like 265 books i think around about wow. that i've done in that time also including like you know i do also do a lot of stuff for graphic audio the past two years so that kind of you know, adds up the, the books that aren't, you know, like me by myself doing something for 24 hours, like Steve and JS too, you know, it's like a little bit different. So, um, but yeah, that's me. Right. And uh, I'm Jeff Hayes. I um, narrate audiobooks as well. I also um, am, the, or, am the owner and CEO of Sound Booth Theatre. And uh, we produce um, not just audiobooks, which actually, you know, the audiobooks that we do put up on Audible are usually multicast. It's usually at least one male or female narrator and then one uh, actor of the opposite sex doing the, uh, the characters. Um, but also we do full cast sound effects and music and we have our own platform. Uh, on, at soundbooththeater.com where we um, sell those uh, more enhanced cinematic audio as we like to call it awesome and jeff do you really want to call yourself a ceo because i've seen some of your all's post on soundbooth theater they're more <laughs> cat herding than anything else <laughs> you mean they're cat herding me is that what you <laughs> no <laughs> other way other way around so oh, okay um, yeah, I mean, I'm, and I'm a CEO, but you know, I need a lot of people to kind of like, tell me what to do anyway. So I think we're pretty much all do. <laughs> lead me <laughs> around. I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm like a mad scientist slash happy dog. Just looking, you know, anything shiny I see, I run after. So, okay. uh, you know, I need to be kept in check. Oh, well, let's see. Do so we have any questions come in yet? Not yet. So let's see here. Um, so audio books, I mean, we all know. Audio, the audiobook lifestyle uh, at this point. Uh, There's an audiobook guys. lifestyle? Sure, why not? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's early for me too, man. I'm, 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 I'm just an hour ahead of you, so it's, it's only 8 o'clock for me. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so what? where do you go after you've got your you've, you've got your book, you've got it pub, you got it being put out to publish. Um, who put Jay in charge? Uh, Balls and move. That was Geneva Richie, so you can, <laughs> you can blame her for the for the for the car crash that this is going to turn into. Uh, uh, so anyway, back to what I back to what I was saying. Um, you got your book published. What's the, what what's what's the next step 
to getting an audio book done? Where, 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 where do you go with that? And yes. Stephanie, since, 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 you're, since you're the author on the panel right now, let's start with you, get, get you going, uh, see where you want to go. Where, 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 do you, where do you go with that? Sorry, Stephanie. Stephanie, you're, you're, you're Stephanie's she, muted. Can she? No, she has a. I think she has a delay on there as well. Oh yeah, it looks you. like it. So. Yeah. We might be losing her. Um, well, I would say like if um, if someone's you know just starting publishing on Kindle, um, ACX is always the way to go. Um, if they don't have like some kind of. Um, you know, if, if, if they haven't been like immediately uh, explosively successful and gotten offers from Tantor or Podium or any of the other audiobook publishers that are out there trying to pick people up. Um, but AC ACX is, is the way to go because it's, it's simple and easy. Um, and it gets you right in the biggest market possible, which is Audible. Um, it, I, I would say ACX me you know that's where my career started as a as a narrator and there's a lot of hungry new narrators out there on acx who were trying to get onto pretty much whatever book they possibly can um so there's a lot to choose from there there's you know and in, in a way i think it's better than than publishing with a publisher at first just so you can kind of get an idea of what it is like to produce an audiobook and what it's like to hire a narrator and um, you know all of that will probably give you an appreciation for the, pu for the publishers because they deal with a lot of that stuff for you um, and they um, you know they get it out of the way they find they find the most professional uh, narrators available right and um, they get you set right away um, so uh, yeah uh, that's what I would say ACX is where you start um, I would uh, like expand on that. Um, ACX is a great place to start um, if you don't have um, any experience, as Jeff says, because they really walk you through it, kind of hold your hand. Um, it's it's very easy to use. Um, and also if you don't have an idea of like who you would like to narrate your book. But if you do, like, you know, if you're a listener already and you're like, hey, I like this narrator, I like that narrator, this author I know used this narrator, like they were great. Um, I also always encourage people to to reach out to narrators directly because, you know, we're all independent contractors and, you know, you can always shoot us an email and be like, hey, I've got this book. Would you be interested? You know, would you be interested in my, uh, sending me an audition? What are your rates? You know, um, we all work through big publishers, but we also work directly with authors from time to time. And so, you know, if you've got a great book uh, and we're interested, um, you know, we have That's time. That's always a way to go, too. <laughs> and we have time. Exactly. Yes, yes. Because we're all booked out several months in advance. That's also a big part of the industry is um, the more uh, popular and established you are, the, the further out your schedule gets booked. <laughs> I think it's important. I think it's really important to mention, though. I mean, like I right now I'm booked out to August, so I couldn't take anything on. That's August you know, next year. Least, August next year. Yeah. Yeah. No, August, August, August this year. year. Yeah. August this year. <laughs> you know, the one that was only, time only, only from, yeah. So I've got them <laughs> wide open. I'm wide open. No, but I mean, that's an important thing to consider. I think if you, you're thinking about it, you have to, I mean, look, Travis is booked out to win 2026. Something like you that, know, yeah. so there, you know, he's not the only one. I mean, I know I'm sure Andrea is probably booked out. To, I mean, you know, other, you guys, I'm sure are also booked out in advance. I mean, and the thing is, you have to think about also, you have to have slots for indies and then slots for publishers, right? So it's not that mm -hmm. I have no space, but I have space in case a publisher reaches out and I have an audition or a book that I have space for that. So it could be that something can come up sooner, but you know, like you can fit it in. Like, I don't have anything else coming. Listen, I can move your book up a couple of months. I mean, that, that has mm -hmm. happened and can happen, but you know, I mean, if you like someone definitely don't wait to reach out, even if you think, okay, my book is finishing up, it's going to be in edits. You know, if I, maybe I've got a couple of months and then you reach out to who you want already and say, hey, you know, especially if you want a simultaneous release. Right. I mean, it's, it's important to to I think sometimes to put all that together. I mean, what do you guys think? Yeah, there are a lot of times when I get emails from people that say, hey, 
my book is published and I want to get an audiobook done right away. And I'm like, that's great. But if you're wanting it released right away, then it's not going to be with me. So um, there is there is something to be said when you're dealing with narrators who've been doing it for a little while, like all of us have, uh, that you're going to want to be reaching out and getting that communication going before uh, you're expecting it to be out next week. It takes a little bit of time one to get on someone's schedule two to complete the audiobook uh it's not like a one or two day process it takes a few weeks at least when you, even when you get started in production depending on the size of your book so uh there's a lot of factors that go into how long a book is going to take what's going to go into uh what's happening with um uh production and uh, how much detail is going to be going into in into that kind of stuff i know jeff has an incredible process of like adding VFX and layers and multicasting and all that stuff takes time. Um, and even if you're just going with a single narrator, they still have to read the book beforehand, prep it, get it ready. Then they do the recording process, which it's not just, we sit down and read it all in one take. I get asked that question so many times and it's like, yeah, I would love to say that I do the recording all in one take and it's no problem at all. But we can't well, and so considering the size of some of those audiobooks there's no way <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. uh then that takes time and then after that it gets goes through a proofing process where we have someone that goes through and follows along in the manuscript and then listens to what you recorded to make sure that what you recorded is actually what's in the book and then you have to do those retakes. Then it has to be mastered and edited. Like there's a process that goes through. So expecting your book to come out right away when you get a narrator is not realistic. So giving a narrator uh, or a producer the amount of time that they need to be able to uh, produce the book and have it retail ready as it, as it were uh, does take a little bit of time. So measuring those expectations and having that communication going so that everyone is knowing what the process is and when they can be expecting all of their uh their files and the mm -hmm. the book to go up and be ready uh to be distributed on amazon or wherever it's going to be distributed is a really important factor to be th considering when you're getting uh, a narrator so sounds about right and you got uh idiots like me who are, who are harassing narrators and our books aren't even written yet so <laughs> what you do that is that something you do <laughs> Well, I've got two. I've got two of my favorite narrators right here on this panel right now. So it's uh, so I got. I'm, I'm, I honestly, I'm fanboying a little bit. I'm trying to maintain it though. So. Yeah, here uh, comments. Uh, Geneva, can you really quick throw up the the, the uh, Streamyard uh, link so everyone can get uh, authorized so that Fick Boy Harmon can uh, actually show his face on here? Would be appreciated. All right, let's see what I got here. Um, all right, so this probably follows right into what I what I was just what I was just saying. Um, thank you, Geneva. Um, so TJ popped up a comment here. Uh, question: What is the worst thing a new author could do when looking for for looking for narration? If I could, again, if I could talk today. Yeah, do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Unless unless you're Neil Gaiman. Unless you're Neil Gaiman, who's like one of the greatest narrators ever. In my opinion. <laughs> I mean, and you know what? It's it's fair. You know what you want. You know what you you have all the voices in your head and all of that stuff. I say, if you think that you want to do it yourself, record ten minutes, record a chapter, which will take you a lot longer than you think it will, and then play it for your friends and see what you know, or, or play it for someone who you trust as a narrator or someone who listens to audio a lot and see what they have to say. Right? I mean, it could be that maybe you're not so bad and you could get some coaching and then you'd be, you know much better, but you still have to know the program to record yourself, right? You know, even if you have an engineer, like when I send myself off to my engineer, it's basically like, I don't even know what they have to do, really. It's kind of just like a double, double check for me. You know what I mean? So it's just, there's just something about, you know, being able to know your DAW very well and your, how you record and stuff like that. Also, it takes time, right? I mean, you could be writing as opposed to, you know, leave it to the professionals, some people say. But, you know, I think if you think you want to do it, Give it a shot. See what it's like to record. How long it takes you to record that? Give it to some couple people to listen to what they have to say, and then, you know, if you think, okay, maybe this is not for me, or maybe I, I heard that voice in my head, but it's not really coming across how I'm thinking about it. Again, like JS was saying, I think it was you who I came in late. My 
internet's horrible up here in Finland, sorry, in the Arctic Circle, um, that, you know, that, that, that you have someone who, who, who knows how to, oh, I forgot, I lost my train of thought, who knows how to do it the right way, right? Who, who can do it like that. I think one of the biggest important things to consider when you're approaching a narrator and the do's and the don'ts is just be respectful, you know, respectful of the person's time. Um, don't be demanding of a lot of, a lot of things like here's a sample I want you to read. And it's like five chapters long. No, that's not, that's not a good sample of an audition. Um, if you're wanting to hear their sample of voices or whatever, be specific. If you have certain things in mind, then Think about how you would describe those so that we can understand it, whether that be I have a particular voice in mind. And so I'm going to cast this. Uh, you, we talked last yesterday about like casting the book. And so if you have specific voices or specific accents, mention those things so that the narrator is fully aware of what's going on in the book. Don't try and hide stuff that's in the book that maybe they you know, there might be concerns about like some narrators have a big problem with um, sexual content or violence or horror. And so if you're like, oh, yeah, no, it's totally fine. It's not that big a deal. And there's not really that much in there. Then they're going to get the book. And if they wait three months in their schedule, you're going to be waiting. They go to prep the book and go, uh, I did not know that you had all of this, you know, bondage and stuff. And I'm not comfortable with that. And then it all falls apart and then you've been waiting for three months for something you're not going to get because the narrator didn't know what was in there because you were cagey about it or whatever um because and you were also, still concerned about getting the narrator exactly into that into that note steve also what you what you give to a potential audiobook narrator as your sample right like so not just narration mm. but also dialogue so yeah. you can see how they handle like male female maybe or an action scene right mm -hmm. like you have an idea because pacing is something that's important too especially i think in lit rpg and you know sci-fi military sci-fi stuff like that i mean it's different than a romance book you know what yeah. i'm saying so yeah there's just different ways of you know and making sure that this person has the right you know pacing or whatever and i, I know a lot of people have said i've heard of auditions coming back um thankfully it hasn't happened to me yet that says oh you know can you try it like a little bit more like this and then they make the adjustment, they think, and then they're like, oh, not quite. And then I think if it's really not handled within the first kind of comeback, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but if you come back like more than once and you're not really happy with the narration, I would maybe consider looking elsewhere for another narrator because I, I don't know that it should be that hard for a narrator kind of to get you. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I think yeah. You, you, definitely, you definitely. might just be wasting your time. With the wrong person just that's just not, not that they're not a great person not a great narrator but maybe for your content or what you're looking for or how you want it read you know not going to be a good fit because what no. happens i think a lot also is that you are once you get the book and you do your like you know first 15 you give them a sample of what you've done or you know i would definitely ask for um you know voice files for uh, major characters in your book so that you have a, you can hear how they're thinking about doing it um mm -hmm. but i think after that it's you don't really have a chance to really direct anyone like if you look if you listen to your book back and you think oh you know what in chapter four i wish you'd kind of been a little bit more aggressive and that it, yeah. it's kind of i, not, I wanted you to stress this before. word in this sentence i wanted you to you yeah, know yeah no. it's mm -mm. it's not something you can micromanage and brian brought up a great point there i saw a flash on the screen uh please edit your books that is a mm. huge thing for us as as narrators you want us to do a great job have it ready for us so that we're not having to try and guess what that sentence was because clearly this is not English, um, <laughs> even though it's presenting itself as English. You yeah, know, we, like, we actually have some panels. I don't know if we already if we did them yesterday or they're coming up today, tomorrow, or next week uh, about <laughs> editing, publishing on 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 the written side of things as well. So take what's if if you're watching this and you're writing, take it into take what Steve just said to heart and. Get your shit edited. Get a get a, de a development editor, and I can't remember all the ones that, that I've I've listened to, that, that like Jez has told me about that you, that you need to do. Even, you go see see you saying it really good. Even if you edit, like if if you're trying to think that you are a great editor on your own and you believe that it's going to be good, or you're using an editor, what I recommend to every author, if especially if they're considering audiobook, is 
read your words out loud because there's a lot of things that seem fine in our head. And then we go to read them out loud and we're like, oh, no human would talk like that. Hmm, okay. Maybe I need to make some adjustments here because that will absolutely help you. Um, no, sure and help us as narrators speak, when we go gobble, to the, the gobbledygook. The gobbledygook. All right. Oh, Stephanie is definitely having connectivity issue problems. All right. So now a couple guys asked this one a couple different ways. Kyle and Richie both asked this. Someone read. Uh, Jay, before you yeah. go into this, can you, when you give us a question, do you want to throw it to a particular person so we're not waiting to guess at who should be answering? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm uh, My brain's not firing on all cylinders yet. So, yeah, I'll, we'll try try to keep starting it on. Uh, we'll, we'll try to keep going around because I know you, you've been jabbering quite a bit. and. <laughs> <laughs> I know I gotta I'll shut up all right so no no you're fine man let's say you professionally talk too much all four of you do uh which is cool the warning is there the label's on it <laughs> all right so Kyle let's see Kyle said uh what kind of things do you need to do to become a narrator and seek out representation so you can get business from authors uh Richie said about the same thing are there any are there any tips you would give to anyone who wants to get into narrating um Jeff I'm gonna throw this one to you first what, what do you what do you got here on this yeah, I don't think you should worry about um, representing yourself professionally until you have chops. Um, until you know you're good at what you're, what you're doing, um, you know, setting up like a business doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Go, like I said, uh, make the connections that you can with authors that are new and fresh, just like you. Um, get, your, get your reps in you know get get to a point where you are getting feedback and you know that you're making a good product then start setting up uh your professional life um, in 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 the space i mean like getting paid to do something that you're just starting off doing um you know that sounds great but uh it's it's a lot harder to it's it's focusing on that prevents you from actually doing getting good at what you do first, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're distracted with a career, um, then then you're not focusing on the right things that, that you need to build on in order to actually give people something worth paying for. Yeah. There's a lot of misinformation out there, especially on social media or TikTok or Instagram or whatever, where they're like, hey, you want to make $400 sitting at home reading aloud? Yeah. You know, check out ACX and it'll be it's there is so much more to this. Like I had done probably I'd say about three months of really solid research into what a narrator is and how they do what they do. Uh, before I even talked about the idea of becoming a narrator, I was just interested in the industry. I was interested in narrators in general. I just thought they were amazing. And so I had done a hardcore deep dive into that. And then after that, when I decided, okay, this is what I really want to do, I did another six months of just training and coaching and working on figuring out the logistics of understanding. Stephanie earlier mentioned a DAW. And I was like, I wonder how many people know what a DAW is and that that's the recording software that we use, you know, like, and you have to know what your RMS levels and you have to like, there's a lot of things that you need to know if you're just, even if you're just popping onto ACX to record, we get questions from new narrators all the time. They're like, oh, uh, can I just do this on my iPhone with my AirPods? No, no, you can't do that. Do I have to read the book first? Yes, you do. Like, so yeah, there's a lot to learn coming into it. Now, that's not to say that, like, it's not something you're, you're incapable of doing. I think that you, they say that there's a book for every voice and a voice for every book. Uh, but do consider the fact that this is not like a ready-made career where you can just jump in and go, okay, I'm ready to record now and I'm going to be a professional. Because um, if you start presenting yourself as that and then you and you're not yeah, yeah you'll you'll create problems for yourself and there's been narrators that or narrators who start their career as if they're a pro and they have all their social media game and they do all this stuff and then they go and release books and people are like oh uh, uh, oh and so then then it creates a you never get a second chance to make a first impression and it really really hurts their career going forward so make sure all of your ducks are in a row. The other thing that I would recommend if you're considering becoming a narrator is Sean Pratt's litmus test, which is sit in a closet or a small space, grab a book that you enjoy and read out loud for one to two hours every night for a week, two weeks. And uh, every time you make a mistake, 
stop, start the sentence again, and start re-recording. You flub up, stop, start again, and start re, you know, start re-saying that line. Do that out loud every day for two weeks, an hour, two hours a night. And if at the end of that, you still want to be a narrator, then yeah, contact any one of us and we'd be happy to help you. Um, but if you can't do it that way with a book that you like, you're not going to enjoy this because I promise you, especially at the beginning, you don't always get to do the books that you love. You get to do a lot of books. You're like, oh, why? Why do I have to record this? This is horrible. So if you don't enjoy doing it, being by yourself alone in a room for two hours every night, then you're not going to be able to do it for four, six, eight hours a day uh, to make a career out of it. So yeah, because that's, that's like a part time thing, right? Like one to yeah. two hours. I'm I'm at least probably I'm probably at least six hours a day in my booth, to yeah. be honest. And if you can <laughs> be in a small space by yourself for that amount of time, just reading out loud, then yeah. you're you're not going to make it because that's the other thing. Another <laughs> thing that authors could probably consider. Don't think that that's what we do is just oh they're just read out loud. Why why do I have to pay them so much? All right. they're doing is just reading my book out loud. Not anymore. That yes. is that's still, not what happens that's still an attitude i i, I have yeah. noticed in in some authors it's just like it's, you crazy know, it, it's like it's like anything any, anything there's, it's a craft mm -hmm. and if you, you learn the craft you're not a you're not going to be a professional until until you get going with it and so once you get to that point obviously you know once once you feel confidence in what you're doing and you're getting good feedback from people that are listening to your audiobooks then yeah cool start focusing on the career aspect and i would say that the best way to do that is um actually to help out your authors um and to kind of learn from what they're doing okay they're promoting their work right you even if they're paying you per finished hour it's probably a good idea for you to be up there promoting with it not specifically for them but for yourself right mm -hmm. anything that you're doing any product that you're putting out there even if you're not gaining royalties from people buying the product there's still um, a good chance they're going to leave a review if you leave a good impression on them right if especially if you're in their marketing if you've talked to someone you know uh like one-on-one -on -one and given them a code to download the book or something you know they're going to remember that interaction right mm -hmm. so you just kind of have to be um, diligent and detailed and deliberate about how you interact with not just the authors but the people that are listening to the product that you're putting out there um so in you know endear yourself to the community not just mm -hmm. to the authors but to the listeners endear yourself um not just as a personality but as a performer um and you know establish your brand that way find out what it is that people like about your narrations and lean into that find mm -hmm. out what your strengths are and and, and use that for your branding mm -hmm. um and you know it's it's it all has to be just like any other art it has to be this organic process where you're finding out what you're good at and 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 figuring out how to focus on those things as you go there's no there's no set way that that's gonna work for everybody unless all you're looking for is a job right? yeah if, if you if you want your career to take off if you want your career to have not just longevity but but an upwards trajectory um, then you have to cultivate your image with um, both authors and listeners and Jeff brings up a great point in the fact that if you want a job, don't become a narrator because that's it's it's not a job. You're not employed ever. Um, it's not like <laughs> you, like it's like you, a it's not like a lifestyle. <laughs> even even if, in fact, I had a conversation here with um, with a narrator. Was it two days ago? Um, who's been in the industry for years and years and years? Was actually a director at. Audible Studios back in like 2013, 2015, like has been a narrator for years and years and years and has talked to, a, like has been in relationships with narrators that have been doing it for 20 plus years. And they're struggling to, you know, find some books because they just are not used to having to hustle. They're used to the, the backlog being there and there wasn't as many narrators out there 
as as an opportunity. And so they just expected a book to fall into their lap and expected a book to fall into their lap. And now they don't know how to navigate where they have to actually like promote themselves or keep in the minds of pr producers or find work in independent circles because they're not getting anything from the big five. And it's I mean, been challenging. Yeah. And to that, I mean, look, when I started in 2000, you know, four years ago, and I, you know, logged on to ACX and I put on my little profile, there were 120,000 producers. I think I went like just for the heck of it to like check my dashboard or whatever, because I did some royalty shares when, when I started out. And I think there's like a million two hundred thousand you know? yeah. producers, producers. Now, so narrators. Yeah. But I mean, so, think of how many so, of those are just completely blank. Oh, yeah, for sure. That someone started and then never but, touched again. But that's the thing, right? But that's the thing. I think it, that's part of it, right? These people mm -hmm. have started something that is just, it's, it's a lot, it's not as easy as people make it out to be. I mean, it's like you say, Steve, it's a cultivation of, I mean, look, when I, I did ACX for maybe like a year and then I just didn't like the quality of things that I saw in there and I wanted to do, I was getting like hired to do a lot of romance, which is great. I mean, I love it, it's fun, but I love sci-fi fantasy, you know, all that stuff. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna do some reach out, you know, myself. Mm -hmm. And so I would, Got, you know, here's another little tip. If you're like, you you feel good about your, you know, your, your setup and what you're doing is, you know, I subscribed to BookBub, picked out what I like to read. You know, I love fantasy. I love horror. I love sci-fi. I get like lists, uh, you know, I get an email once a day or once a week. And then I would reach out to those, those authors if they didn't have something on Audible. And I would say, I would read like a couple of minutes of their book and say, Hey, this is what your book could sound like. If you're interested in doing audio, you know, please let me know. And mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I haven't been on ACX in two and a half years and I haven't done any reach out probably in about a year and a half because now I have all those, you know, I have authors and I have series and I have, you know, people who hear me from word of mouth or who recommend me, you know, because I'm on time. I communicate, you know, I don't let deadlines go by I, or, if, you know, if something happens, I'm like telling you, listen, this just happened. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to need an extension or this is what's going on in my life. You know, I really want to make this happen. Is it OK? You know. If it doesn't work for you, yeah, I can help you find somebody else. Like I'm literally that kind of person. It's not like, you know, I keep your book. I don't tell people something because I want to keep it. And this is a little bit late. It's, I think communication too is very important with authors, right? That you let everybody know what's going on with their book, right? It's, it's their baby too. Mm -hmm. Narration is really <laughs> arcane progressive cultivation system for sure. Yeah, I definitely got to agree with you on that one there, uh, Neil. You know, a lot of stuff like that. That's what I was laughing at too. Nice All comment, right, Neil. So, <laughs> what do you say? I, I, what do you I, say? I, I, love, you... I, I love moderating a panel with a bunch of narrators because you guys will just talk and talk no matter what. It's great. It makes, makes, makes my job so much easier. I don't I, I don't have to talk. You know, my time's better coming up. All right. Uh, well, let's go ahead and move on. Um, see, Brian's got a question over here. Sit, he, he's been sitting on. We've been sitting on for a few minutes. Um, since you've all become established over the years, do you ever fear becoming pigeonholed or typecast to a certain type of book? Uh, sorry, sorry, certain type of certain style of story or genre. Genre. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a personal system of doing one book for the business and one book for your sanity, or something like that? Uh, JS, I want you to hit, hit, hit this one up first. What do you think? Sure. Uh, that is, that is of course a fear. Uh, I know people who are, uh, you know, stuck in one genre. I'm not going to drop names, but I know people who are stuck in one genre exclusively and they're like, you know, I like it, but I'd really like to be able to do something else. Um, so I, <clears throat> I grew up reading science fiction and fantasy. Um, I've always been a big reader. Um, and so when I started uh, getting into audiobooks, I intentionally targeted the types of books that I like. And so fortunately, I've been able to establish myself in genres that I enjoy reading. And so I'm not afraid of that because where I am right now, um, I like the books I'm reading. So uh, if I get pigeonholed uh, as what I'm doing now, totally fine with it. Um, but yeah, if I was in a genre that I didn't like, that would suck. <laughs> I'm not about that. Uh, Stephanie, you got anything to bring up on that one? Or? I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, I was pigeonholed with romance when, because when I started, I just, I had no, see, I wasn't like Steve. I just kind of jumped in. Like I just, you know, did one, like I did an audition on ACX, just with like my little USB microphone, just wanted to try it, you know, just to see what it was and just to kind of just to do something, right? Because I'd been looking at it for like a month or so and I thought this could be cool. 
And then I got the book, right? Like my first audition and I'm like, oh my God, what the F do I do now? Like, <laughs> I didn't know anything. I didn't know, I didn't have a doll, I knew zero. So I literally had four months of blood, sweat and tears, literally tears, recording a book that was like eight hours. It took me probably 80 hours to record and work. And I mean, it was, you know, it was traumatic. Um, but it, you know, it just entrenched me even more. Like I gotta get, I gotta figure this out. I gotta do this. And so in the beginning for me, I only knew ACX. So I didn't, wasn't like, you know, JS and had like, I mean, I love sci-fi and fantasy and stuff, but it wasn't a lot on ACX. It was a lot of romance. And so I kind of got into that to start with. And then I realized this is great and all, but I, I don't even read romance. Like I've <laughs> I never really read romance books. But because I think I'm an actor and I, I'm very emotional, I was I connected very well to those kinds of stories. So I feel like I got pigeonholed. Even now I fight against, I fight with that. I've started to really put everything to my pseudonym um, and try to really focus more on like, you know, then I reached out to Dawn Chapman and I was like, Dawn, what do you have? Like, what are you doing? How do I do, how do I get in and do more of your kinds of books that I love? I love this, you know, lit, lit RPG, sci-fi, things like that. And you know, she helped to, you know, kind of guide me. I think I did a couple of shorts for, um, for Tao and, you know, it was just, you really have to, you know, I mean, if you, if you can do it when you start and you really like have a pseudonym for romance, for instance, and then you, you know, you work on the other parts, I think you just have to have a very focused method and just allow yourself to, you know, I don't know, put yourself in that, in that mode of that's what you want. And you reach out to those kinds of people and those are the books that you do. And, you know, you try to get more things in your name in that genre. It's hard to break out, I have to say, once you kind of get pigeonholed. But again, I mean, a lot of people make a lot of money only doing romance, like a lot. Um, you know, it's like, and they have a lot of fans, right? So there's, there's like that whole thing, like a lot of, I think you guys also have a lot of fans in your genre and it's, you know, it helps you to get more books. So it's hard, it's tricky to, to navigate all of it. Cause I mean, in the end, you might all feel the same way, but I just love to tell a good story, right? It could be in anything. It's just, yeah. mm -hmm. it's just hard sometimes. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, Jeff, Steve, did you, you just want to chime on this one with the pigeonholing or, or are you, Jeff, you're muted. Uh, yeah. Uh, lit RPG is definitely something that, you know, I, uh, could be considered in danger of being pigeonholed in. Um, but, you know, the, that's what got me to the dance, right? That's what got me got me where I am. And so I'm always going to, going to appreciate and come back to Lit RPG. Um, but, you know, as an artist, of course, I always want to be doing something new, something new all the time. I always want a new challenge. I want a new different type of character. Um, I, I even kind of force myself to take you know, extra challenges within the genre um, just to do that. But always know that if you're doing something for your own artistic gratification, it comes at a career cost. And if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to put in the work and, you know, just drill into another genre, hey, kudos, do it. You know, um, it, it's, it's good for you as a performer. It's good for you as an artist to explore those different those different genres because it, it, it helps increase your range, you know, in all sorts of different ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's you're going to become a better narrator if you narrate in many different genres. But, Absolutely. But okay. there's going to be consequ consequences to your career. You're going to make a little bit less money. You're going to make a little bit less impact with your with your next release, unless you just happen to pick up a zinger. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always the chance that you'll that your first sci-fi uh, happens to be a Hugo Award winner, or whatever. Um, but you know, don't bank on that. Don't bank on that. Mm -hmm. Always, always remember that if you're if you're doing something for your art, it's it's going to be at the cost of your career in some way. Uh, I mean, I. I can agree to to a certain extent to what you're saying there, Jeff, but I think that also you're like a, a poster child of someone who was passionate about a certain thing and about certain ways that you wanted to do your art and how you made that work for you and have become incredibly successful uh, by in some ways bucking against the system, especially when it comes to effects on audio and that that kind of stuff. And you've you've always pushed 
the bounds because you're a creative and because you've wanted to go into other genre or not necessarily other genres, but other forms or styles or, or ways of doing things. And you're looking for new opportunities all the time. And I think that's uh, a, a point of like passion will really push you far. Yeah. And uh, as long as you put in, cause you put in tons of time, tons of work, tons of effort to uh, make what you're passionate about successful. And it's, we, I mean, there's lots of comments that come in all the time about, well, should we have effects on our audiobooks or can I put in this and whatever? And I always caution narrators on doing that because it, Jeff can, knows far better than I do how if you don't do it well or correctly, it can really blow up in your face. And Jeff has put in the time so that when he does an audiobook with VFX or any kind of special effects, uh, they, they match the story and they aren't jarring and aren't pulling people out of, out of the uh, experience. And even then, when you do such a high quality thing, you still get some pushback from that. But you've had enough people that have uh, been passionate about that, that you've created a real uh, community around you. And I think that that's the important thing is creating a community around yourself. Um, pigeonholing yourself is not necessarily a bad thing, especially like Jay said, if it's in a genre that you love or you like, then yeah, push towards that. I, I immediately fell in love with lead RPG and I was like, yeah, this is where I want to be. Um, but I'm not going to lie in the fact that there's sometimes when I've done, you know, you're on like your fourth, fifth book that can feel very, very similar. I was doing a lot of tower climber books, a lot of them, and I love them, but I didn't realize how, um, overwhelmed I was until I got a chance to do a nonfiction for Penguin Random House. And I was like, Oh, this was a nice palette cleanse. Oh, and then it re refreshed me a little bit and I was able to jump back into lit RPG. So I think it's great to, um, I think it's great if you're able to have something where you know your branding and then from there, uh, do a little bit of a palette cleanse here and there, whether to just kind of like refresh yourself or to learn something new so that you're not feeling like you're going stagnant because we can just get stuck in a rut and you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again, or you don't even notice that you're doing the same thing over and over again and it's become old hat. And now you need to learn something new and trying a different genre, working for a different publisher, doing uh, a different type of book, or maybe doing something else completely different. That's not audiobook related. That's creative to kind of fuel yourself will help reinvigorate that passion or give you a new idea of something you want to try in the genre that you're, you're, uh, you're pursuing as okay. your main genre. Okay. It's good. Um, you're all got a pretty good take on it. Different points of view on, uh, moving around. Um, Brian threw up another one here. He's pretty good at making these long, the long question comments. Uh, said, uh, any pet peeves, uh, like one of the most common things I see are when we ask narrators to do bits or work off a prompt on the spot. I imagine people asking you how to get into narration is tiresome at this point in your careers. Um, Cause yeah, I, I, I know I'm kind of guilty of uh, asking narrators to do voices when they're doing, when they're doing lives. So I can't imagine that's horrible. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, wouldn't you want to, you want to start off with this one? Give us your point. Sure. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, I was doing voices yesterday in my panels. <laughs> so we were, you know, talking about, you know, different characters that we actually, um, enjoy doing you know that you remember like that really leave an impact like i was saying that i just did i just did rise of Oshbob by kevin sinclair with neil helligers and I, I fell in love with this you know with this detective and she sounds like you know natasha leone and so you know i don't know where she came from but i absolutely fucking love her you know what i'm saying so you know like i don't mind to do little things like that and, and because I think it's fun to when you, when you, and I never had a voice like that before. I've never used that kind of voice. So I think sometimes it's fun to, to do those little things. I think as far as people asking me about how to be an audiobook narrator, I don't mind it if you've done your homework, you know, do your homework and come to me with a valid, you know, can you listen to my demo? Because I've, you know, I, I tried to do, you know, I've been studying this and looking into that, but if I hear one more time, so everyone says I have a great voice and I, and I, I love to read books and I want to be an audiobook narrator. I mean, you guys also must have the same, like, you just mm. want to shoot yourself. It's just, I, what does that mean? You know, do yeah. some homework and then come to me. I'm, I'm absolutely here for you, but, but let me know that you're serious. Cause I don't want to waste my time with someone who's, 
you know, thinking about something that sounds kind of fun and maybe, I don't know, you know, no, no. Yeah, who, who has time for that? I mean, yeah. Yeah, personally, I know I got a face for radio, but I can't do I I could never do audiobook narrations. You guys are so much better doing different voices than I am. Um, JS, what any pet peeves you can ask from uh, from fans or, for, or from, <clears throat> from authors? Or um, my my pet peeve would just be uh, not well edited manuscripts. Honestly, uh, there's <laughs> nothing more annoying than just like rolling through a recording and coming to a sentence, and you're like what the fuck does that say? <laughs> That's not even a sentence. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it takes so much time. It, it takes so much extra time for you, right? I mean, to work through it and figure it out and you're stopping. I mean, it adds a lot of time that the narrator has to work to figure it out and work through it. And it's difficult. It's challenging. Yeah, working on that, uh, that seriously pisses me off too. Um, just manuscripts that aren't edited properly. Um, but also when, uh, when there's like a name, let's say some crazy made up sci-fi fantasy name. And I ask the author, how do I pronounce this? And they say, I don't know. <laughs> like, why did you even, why did yeah. you write it down that like, so <laughs> it's, it's things like that, that makes me feel like I care more about their project than they do. Mm -hmm. And that 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 infuriates me i i don't want to work on someone's project that they don't care about and mm -hmm. that they're they they don't carefully consider what they're doing it's like they're not a craftsman but i am and i'm working no 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 no. like that 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 just really that really bothers me when when they're just not into their own work enough that they can tell you how that they can't tell you that how to pronounce their characters names yeah um, yeah there's uh on 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 that as well is the ones where uh they try and and say like they don't change the a pet peeve is when they don't change the way they write a character's dialogue so that it matches the character so that in their writing they sound like they're general american and all they do is add he said in a latin accent at the end and it's like well they no they wouldn't ever say it like this if they were Latino or they wouldn't ever say it like this if they're from Ireland. Like yeah. try and consider if you're going to have, if you're going to specify certain cultures or sp certain things, do a little bit of research into how they talk or what they, how they say things so that you can make your characters sound unique and different. Cause if they all say the same thing, I had uh, a book that I was doing where um, the author was a lawyer and about, I think, three different characters said five different times in the book, oh, that's a difference without distinction. And <laughs> that, like that, you know what that you know what that means? Like, but it's not a common saying, you know. And so I said, why is everyone saying it's a different with difference without distinction? He's like, oh, that's we hear that all the time. That's, you know, lawyers use that phrase all the time. And I'm like, OK, but your main character is a janitor. Why is he using that phrase? Like, that's just a weird phrase for a janitor to be saying. And then you have some other randos. That, like, I mean, like, I know that you're used to that language, but change it up so that janitors sound like janitors. And not to say that a janitor wouldn't use that phrase per se, but like, there needs to be a reason why they're saying it, not just because you like the phrase. So, you know, like, you need to, you need to consider what you're, what you're putting into your books as far as, um, how these how these characters are behaving so that we don't have to work as hard to make them sound like unique characters and that they have a different voice or a different way of speaking um yeah i, yeah. I want to be able to trust that the author is doing what they're doing deliberately mm -hmm. so that i feel trust in my own choices when i'm performing it right if i if if i feel like the author is you know has put on the page exactly what they want um then i just breeze right through right that's the thing is is everything's you know all the instructions are right there in front of me that's my favorite types of authors to work with the mm -hmm. ones who understand language and who treat it as a craft in the same way that i treat what i do as a craft in that um you know they're not just telling you what 
they want happening or what is what is going on they're not listing a series of events they're creating an experience mm -hmm. with with and, their text yeah and don't you feel like do, i mean i don't know if you guys are the same way but like i prioritize those authors like mm -hmm. oh yeah 100%. you know like if like i have an author who i absolutely love but her her deadlines are all over the place <clears> but she's such a great writer mm -hmm. that i'll just I'll, I'll find a place for her i'll oh, fit yeah. her in you know what I mean? Whereas other people, if it's difficult or the language is hard to get through and there's not a really great communication, I'm like, I've got something in September, you know, yeah, I, I do, I have space for you, but I'm not going to prioritize this person because, you know, they don't go out of their way and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's good work. And, 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 you know, I don't mind to do it, but I'm going to prioritize the people who are good communicators, who, who write well and who I, who it really flows and I can connect with. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, I mean, that's how I am. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Similar. So, so, so basically what you're saying is that the people who can write more right towards the narration ang um, angle of it, they're going to get a little bit better priority. Yeah. I mean, not even more necessarily, normally. not yeah, even necessarily not, for narration, narration. but ju right. just no, that no. it's clear that they're, they're your good at what they do. Yeah. It's right. clear that they, that they have a vision and they're able to execute it deftly. Okay. And for that, for any of the authors that are going, oh, shit, I don't know how to do that. Oh, I, this is where editors, a good editor, will help you with those things. So this is where an editor isn't just a spell checker. It's not grammarly. That's not what an editor does. An yes. editor should be helping you figure out where you're needing a voice for these characters, where it feels like these are all two dimensional or they're all the same, you know, carbon copy punch and paste for all of your characters that a, a good a good editor will help you understand how to make that better and to work with you on getting those characters sounding more real believable and fleshed out and three-dimensional sounds pretty and i good. just want to say that's what i say is, to that whole thing is it's not that i'm not going to do a good job with your book if you're not the best writer or whatever i'm going to give it every single thing i have because my name's on it Absolutely. right <laughs> so i'm not going to just like give a half-assed for performance because it's like you know maybe not the best written book right i mean i'm going to give right. it everything right but right. it's it's just it's just not something that's going to bring me a lot of joy it's going right. to be like oh my god this is another sentence okay like right. i got to work through it i know it's going to take me more time I know it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get through and harder. So it's going to be something that I'm going to do when I have time later. Yeah. Right. But something that gives my soul like, oh, this is going to be, it's going to rip mm -hmm. my heart out. I'm going to be bawling by the end of it. It's going to be like a great story. I'm going to find a place for that. Right. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. like I have, I have a book for, um, for, for, um, for an author that I literally, I don't know when I'm going to fit it, but I'm like, I will fit it. I we, we're going to get it done. I'm going to find if it's Fridays, you know, for the next <coughs> month, I'll, or Saturday mornings, I'll be doing it. You know what I mean? Like that kind of a thing, because yeah, it's, you, you know, you got to get it going. Yeah, All right. So we are, we are starting to run low on time here. I got one. I have to ask because Harmon's here in the group be, 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 being, a, being a smart ass. And uh, since we're talking about pet peeves and, uh, and uh, requests from uh, fans and narrators, uh, say, can I hear everyone's best chuckle? Here's the sentence. You want to be a narrator, eh? The reader chuckled. So, uh, no, J JS, I want to hear yours first. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually tempted to give this like a, an evil villain. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Go, go nuts. Go nuts. <laughs> that, that, that was, that was, that was it. That was it. <laughs> I'm gonna go too over the top because it's a chuckle. It's not a cackle, right? Well, no, you got, you got to read, you got to read the line though. <laughs> Oh, I have to read the sentence too. Yeah, yeah, you got oh. Your sentence. Oh, okay. I didn't. Sorry, I misunderstood so you the assignment. Narrator, eh? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> eh? <laughs> you want to be a? <clears throat> you want to be a narrator, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeff just wet himself a little. The bit. reader chuckled. <laughs> All right. So, so since we did that, Jeff, I, I got to hear yours since you've reacted so much. You want to be a narrator, eh? The reader chuckled. There we go. Little, a little, a little scoff at the beginning. How's that? <laughs> Not worse. <laughs> Steve, what do you got? I feel like I have to like pull up my hardcore Canadian for this yeah, yeah. A. So I don't know. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Neil's Neil's counting on you, man. <laughs> oh, so much pressure. You want to be a narrator, eh? 
That was good. Stephanie, is your mic working that you can do it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to be a narrator, eh? The reader asked. <laughs> awesome. She wins. I don't know. I kind of got to give it to JS just, 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 just as he made you die over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we've had some pretty good uh, questions going on here. And you guys, you guys love to talk. We've, we've discovered that. Uh, well, we got five more minutes. Uh, five more minutes. Got a couple more questions here. I got a whole bunch of questions, actually. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna throw this one from uh, James really quick. This is so this this kind of falls in where we where we've been going. Uh, what is the hardest book you guys have ever done? So, Steve, throw this one at you mm. first on this one. Oh man, that's it's that's like asking what's your favorite book. There's so many different ways that you could go with that because there's every book has its different challenge, right? And so I've had books where the uh, it was uh, I did a book called. Um, slow death by rubber duck and it was a book about uh all the toxins and chemicals and different things that we ingest or can be exposed to in our bodies and they went into detail on the chemicals and the scientific jargon that was in there and it was it was a slog going through a lot of those <clears throat> chemical formulas and and different ways to like do that so that that was a I'm that was sweating a for you book. over here. Yeah, that was I'm like starting was... to sweat thinking about <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, that was the one where I was really grave. I had a director on that one. And so he was I nice. mean, he stopped and start constantly having to, you know, like we had already done a pronunciation guide, but there was still some where it was like, How do we gotta make sure we know how to pronounce this or how do we run this formula or whatever? And so yeah, that was that was a that was a tough one for me for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, uh JS, what do you got? Um, so, uh, I, I do, uh, a lot of military sci-fi for a certain author, uh, Daniel Gibbs, and he has a very, in his universe, basically, um, different planets have different accents and he's very specific with them in his books. And so, uh, for his books, I generally have to do over a dozen accents per book and each of them is like listed on the page. So it's like, I have to do like this person has a Nigerian accent. This person has a Japanese accent. This person has a Russian accent. This person has a Haitian accent. I'm just like, whew, all right. <laughs> it's good. It's, you know, it's like makes me like flex my muscles and like stretch my chops. But uh, it's definitely challenging every time. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, what's the hardest book you've ever written? Or, or not written, read, <laughs> narrated? Um, I think like for me, I just, I did this, uh, a, I did a sapphic epic fantasy. So the majority of my characters were women and there were, you know, only like two accents basically ish that I could kind of pull from for a variation of, <laughs> of different, you know, women. And a lot of them were all young and they age very slowly. And so, you know, it was very, very challenging. Um, and the only, you know, and you think, God, am I even, is it even like working after all of this? And I've gotten some really great feedback from people um, that said, you know, I knew who was talking and I didn't even need a tag on it. And so I'm like, okay, well, I guess I got it. But I think those, when it's, when it's like, you know, you have 10 women, they're all, they're on the same age. They all have the same accent and they're all having a conversation together. It's that, that kind of does me in sometimes it's challenging. Okay. Jeff, what about you? What's the hardest one you've ever narrated? Um, yeah, that's hard to say, uh, but some some of them came to mind, and it's you're just narrated, right? Just narrated. Um, so recently, um, I gave myself uh, a really difficult task in narrating *A Summoner Awakens* by Kerberos, um, and that one the uh, author requested that I take inspiration from *Peaky Blinders*, specifically from uh, uh, from Tommy the main character um, to play the main character, except the main character in this book starts off a hundred something years old. Oh my word. So I'm narrating from the perspective of a 120 year old man with, you know, this uh, Birmingham accent. Mm -hmm. And um, throughout the book, since the, after the first chapter, he goes back in time and re uh, w with his 120 year old mind, 
possesses the body of his younger self that's just about to graduate from this magic school um he's so i'm like narrating old but the main character's voice is young and as the story progresses his mind starts to meld more with the young self so it's like the whole time his voice is getting a little younger and younger through the narration um so that that was a big challenge for me um uh but another another one that i think honorable mention is there's a one called one called clan that i did years ago and actually um stephanie reminded me of this because um for those of you who don't know what i'm mostly known for is voices right like doing lots of different you know making all the characters sound very distinct but in this book clan all the characters were clones of the same person oh wow so i had to and they're all different ages as well right so i had to somehow differentiate all of them because they all have distinct personalities mm -hmm. but they're genetically all the same person mm -hmm. wow, so that's... Having to do that was was actually quite a challenge, and I that's and gonna be I, a serious challenge. Yeah, <laughs> I really really enjoyed it. It was it was a lot of fun. Okay, so. well, I want to thank all of our panels today: J.S. Arquin, Steve Campbell, Jeff Hayes, and Stephanie. Ha I cannot pronounce your middle name. Nemeth. 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 It's Hungarian. Nemeth. Nemeth, Nemeth, Parker. Nemeth Parker. Awesome. Um, I know I didn't, we didn't get to all you guys' questions because um, all, all of our narrators love to run off at the mouth, which is awesome. We love it. Don't not not not, not piss me there. Um, oh get your questions up on, over on uh, over in the Guildify Con Discord, and they'll uh, they'll be over there answering some some or all of them. Um, and ne next up, uh, we're gonna have a, a take over here in just a few minutes by Steve Campbell. Uh, so you can j jump in on that and uh, come and har come and harass him some more. Uh, in the meantime, though, um, JS, Jeff, Stephanie, um, give me a quick chance here before we uh, close out. What are you working on now? Steve can talk about his on his takeover. Okay. So, JS, what, what are you what are you working on right now? What's what's coming up for you? Um, <clears throat> I'm working on uh, an academy series actually for Podium uh, that will be coming out in a few months. It is lit RPG. Uh, I guess it's, it counts as lit RPG. I mean, there's not a lot of crunchy statistics, but it's uh, it's definitely uh, in in the lit RPG fantasy genre. So uh, should be a lot of fun. This Academy Extra. Cool, awesome, Stephanie. What do you got coming up for us? Uh, I'm working on uh, the City of Artem kind of eight book thing for Podium. So with Neil Helligers, I just record finished recording The Rise of Ashbab. Next month we're recording the second book in that series. I've done Dawn's book, the first one of that with Neil Thorne. So that those four books will be coming out soon. I'm also working on when I get back uh, to the to Europe to the main like you know down south. I'll be working on um, the Drone Rising series from Kyle Johnson, which is one of my favorite series of all times because I play a sociopathic um, you know female main character and she's amazing and you just you can't help but root for her. And um, so yeah, I got those things kind of going on. Awesome. Great. Jeff, what do you got coming up? Um, well, I just finished narrating Everybody Loves Large Chests, Volume 10. Um, uh, when I get back from uh, Rhode Island, I'm going to start on Chrysalis Books 4 and 5. That's the one where I'm uh, playing an ant. And uh, yeah, I'm still working on the audio immersion tunnel of Dungeon Crawler Carl, the reboot of, of the series that's full cast sound effects and music. Um, episode two of that's going to release on October 31st on our website. So um, every two weeks after that, we have a new episode, and it's just a, a, a complete redo of Dungeon Crawler Carl with uh, tons of music, tons of great music. Uh, that's the biggest part. That's the part I'm most excited about is everyone hearing all this awesome music that we've made to uh, represent the world of Dungeon Crawler Carl. So. Sweet. Oh, yeah, soundbooththeater.com for you to grab that stuff. Uh, Soundbooth does have their own app, so you can get you can get different stuff on there. Um, I know Jeff, uh, just off the top of my head, has there's at least two on there that I've personally listened to, or three or four actually. Um, he did a cover of Wonderwall for Princess Donut, which <laughs> see I'm killing him again. That one he did he did a re he did a reading in Carl's voice of uh, the Raven by Poe. So yeah. 
Jeff, yeah. yep, it's great, great. I mean, all, all you guys are. So, all right, great. I'm love, thanks love, for love, having love me. talking to you guys. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Like I said, Steve's um, takeover is coming up here in just a few minutes. So come on in and talk to him, and uh, and, and you can find out everything he's he's got going on right now too. So, and all right, guys, thanks, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, uh, thanks, Jack. Have a nice takeover. Bye. In the, uh, have a great day, guys. Bye. Guys. <laughs> Bye.